This is for all the fat girls who feel like a monster when they have a crush on someone. I've seen this recur in my comments a bunch of times now, and I felt exactly like this my entire life, so let's talk about it. A few days ago, I posted a TikTok about how having a fat person romantically or sexually interested in you is presented in media as a horror, and it makes so much sense that we would see ourselves as the monsters because that's literally how we are depicted in media. The ways that it's shot, the way that the sound is used, the fat person is literally depicted as a monster specifically specifically in these romantic situations. I think the reason for that is because usually when you think about dating somebody, it may not be like super romantic to say that there's a lot of deliberate work in a relationship in the sense of like you have to really allocate resources and understand what person can do what thing and how to go about doing that stuff, right? When you're living with somebody, it's like very, very difficult to go, okay, I'm going to do this and you're going to do this and we're going to try to make this work as best as humanly possible. A lot of people in 2024 have this, imagine, this imagination of going, relationships are supposed to be perfect. They're supposed to work regardless of who the other person is. I don't have to take into account what that person is good at or anything like that. I just know this person is going to do this particular type of thing and that's it. That's not always the case. A lot of times people just don't do shit, right? You tell somebody, okay, hey, dude, can you take out this trash? Can you do this? Can you do that? And the dude doesn't do it. Then like, you know, eventually what's going to happen is that that relationship is going to eventually falter because even though a lot of people might consider that to be like a bullshit reason for a relationship failing, if that shit keeps adding up and doing the terrible thing over and over and over again, eventually it's going to fail. And in the same way that like, if you're very fat, you have this imagination in the back of your head going, this person is going to suck to be in a relationship with because this person is going to, I know, not going to be compatible enough for me because I have, I have an active lifestyle or like I know I do these particular things and I know this person's not going to have that. And I know that a lot of people might be going, David, you're stereotyping. I am stereotyping. But the thing is, it's not the same stereotyping as it would be for like, a black guy, for instance, right? Like, if you said black guys do this because they're black, obviously that's wrong because I know of a lot of black guys that don't do that particular thing because they're black, right? But for fat people, it's kind of hard not to stereotype given the fact that, like, what are you going to say? Fat people... Like, if you're 250 pounds, you're not going to have a hard time walking upstairs. You know that's a fucking lie. Obviously, you're going to have... It's obvious, dude. You're going to have a hard time walking upstairs. So, a lot of the stereotypes that you can attribute to fat people might just be true. And I know that a lot of people think that it's like, oh, it's really wrong to say that. Bro, how many times have I watched a fat person say... Right? I've made jokes and I've literally gone, fat people have to what? Like they have to put on extra deodorant or they have to put on deodorant underneath their boob area, their extra boob area, maybe the back boobs or whatever, dude. They're not able to see their penises. They can't like, you know, properly take uh, shits anymore because the toilet's too small for them. And I make these jokes and people go, David, come on, dude, that's never happening, right? That's never happening. And then you see a video of somebody saying that exact thing and then you go, yeah, this is pretty obvious. Like, fat people are having these issues across the board. So, when people say, I don't want to date this fat person because this fat person is going to have these issues, it's pretty obvious to me that those issues are valid in more ways than I feel like people will justify. But, you know, that's I want to hear what she has to say about it. And so, us having romantic feelings and then being like, I'm a monster, makes perfect sense. It's not even just being told. It's just like a lot of responsibility because like when you're, when you are yourself, you have to take care of yourself. And probably that is the person, the first and foremost person that you have to take care of is yourself because otherwise like every other area of your life is going to slack. And then you have to worry about that other person. And that other person is going to have a lot of problems, especially if they're bigger. So why would I want to take on more responsibility than I already have to? Now, don't get me wrong. Having more responsibility is not always a bad thing. But taking on responsibility for, 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 no, other, for, for no other reason other than just taking on responsibility is not a good thing. Like, you should take on responsibility as it comes, but to knowingly go into a relationship and go, I know this person is going to be terrible to be around. I know this person is, like, super incompatible with my lifestyle. I know this person is going to be lazy or whatever the hell, and it's, like, I'm not going to be attracted to this person. Like, what you're doing is, like, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You're building a foundation on, like, twigs, and <laughs> you could make it work, but oftentimes when I see people think, like, this is going to work, it often doesn't, and... It sucks to say that. It is true. No one could ever love you. It's being told that you loving someone is a horrible thing to happen to them. It's the worst thing that could happen to them. Because your desire is scary. It's literally a threat to them. Because think about it. If a monster is interested in you, it might mean that you're a monster too. Or it might mean that the monster has enough physical power over you to force you to do what they want. It might just be like a Beauty and the Beast situation. I don't even understand why she's talking about it like this, man. If you're... There's like, there's just like this idea that, um, 
like you need to tame the monster depending on who you're with. I know a lot of I've I've met a lot of girls that have this mentality where they go like, "Oh, you're really damaged." It's really fucked up to say that, by the way. Or like, "You're really damaged or you're emotionally damaged. I can fix you. I can work on you. I can solve your problems." In reality, um a lot of people are flawed and they have a lot of issues and those can stem from a lot of different things, obviously, but most people are not thinking about it like that. Most people are not like hyper focusing on the fact that they have, I don't know, an eating an eating disorder or maybe they have an unhealthy obsession with pornography or maybe they're beating off too many times a day or something like that. Most people are not thinking about it like that. Most people are just doing stuff and until they realize it's a problem, it's not a problem. In the same way, it's like obesity is not really a problem for these people because they never really – they never really like see the issues until they see the issues, right? You don't know you're fat until you look in the mirror one day and you go, damn, what? oh my God, what happened, right? It's just, it's just like, like that. Um, and it's like, for instance, you're seeing yourself day to day to day to day, right? So you don't see those subtle differences. You don't see that issue of like the gut getting bigger and bigger because you're seeing it every single day. It's like being in a room and there's a smell in the room. You get used to it gradually and then you you eventually you don't even notice it. But when somebody else comes in and they come in, they go, whoa, right? You know, you're like, mm, right? It smells terrible. They know because they've never been in this environment before and then they're going to notice it instantly in the same way that like you haven't seen a friend in like a year and then eventually you see that friend. They're going to notice the differences on you because they, they're seeing you here and then they're seeing you here and then the before and after is going to be like astonishing to them, especially when it comes to like weight gain and things like that. So if you're talking to me and you're going like, oh, it it might be like the case of dating a really crazy girl. Um, I feel like not many guys have this experience because guys in general don't date nowadays. Hashtag, you know, be an incel. Women, women aren't worth it. No, I'm fucking with you. Women are totally worth it. Unless you're gay, obviously, then they're not worth it. But if you're gay and you think women are worth it, then probably maybe in a different direction. If you've ever dated a crazy girl, which is, I feel like few and far between. I don't know. Somebody can let me know down below. Do you think it's, do you think crazier dudes are more likely or do you think crazier women are more likely? I feel like it's definitely niche on both topics, but I've dated a really crazy girl before, and I never thought I would be in a situation like that before. And it could be really nice at first to think that this person is like totally, um, completely obsessed with you or whatever. And that's really nice. But eventually it kind of gets like, wait a minute now, if I come home, are you going to be, is my hamster going to be in the microwave? Is it going to be exploded? Did you key my car? Did you throw a Molotov in my car? You know what, you know what I'm talking about? Like that stuff's obviously not good. Um, how do you have the key to my house? I've never given you this key before in my entire life. How do you know the passwords to everything that I have? It's like super concerning, right? But I know a lot of guys that like would obsess over a girl like that. Like this girl loves me. This girl loves me. But you know, what's really interesting though, is that usually I find the guys that are like really, really seek it out. They, even though they really want it, they would never get it because ultimately the thing that they want the most can never be attracted to them because they are the person that wants it. You know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like opposite attracting because you don't want it. You would get it. If that makes any sense. I don't know. Personally speaking though, I don't know what she means by the monster dude. I don't think that fat people are just inherently bad because they're fat. I don't, I, I, I'm very interested in hearing what she's got to say about this. Too, or it might mean that the monster has enough physical power over you to force you to do what they want. I've heard a lot of women say that they like dating really, really bigger men because they like that, like, that, like, I don't know, like, in the back of their mind, they're hearing or they're seeing this guy who's massive and ginormous. And at any point, this guy can come up and snap their neck and kill them. And <laughs> I remember I was talking to this girl one time about that. And uh, she was like, this is why it's never, you know, it could never work between me and you, David, because you are, you know, you're smaller than me. Um, you're not a tall man. You're not a big guy. So, like, you could never, like, intimidate me. And I'm just thinking, like, what kind of logic do you have? Like, why would you ever want to be in a relationship that at any point you're, like, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, like, this guy could kill me. And I love it. Like, she would tell me she would get really turned on from that. And I was, like, hearing your talk. And I was like, that's, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I get it. Uh, you have your kinks, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with it in the sense of, like, I've peed in people's mouths, right? Like, obviously, who am I to say that your kink is weird? But that's fucking weird to sit there and say, like, in the back of your mind, you're hoping that this guy has the ability to kill you or maybe, like, doesn't do it or something like that. Maybe there's, like, a little bit of mm, – maybe there's a little bit of flavor in that in the sense of, like, this guy could kill me, but he doesn't. Therefore, he's, like – you know what I'm saying? Like, it's awesome that way. I've saw, like, porns before where guys had guns on women or, like – I remember I was talking to this girl one time. She was like, put a knife to my neck. I want to know that you can take my life. And I was just, I was just thinking like, I don't know. It's, it's not for me personally. Like, I don't, I don't want to have like the, the kink of like, Hey, 
let I might slip up here and if I like if I go too far in one direction it's over and then my life is over I don't know some people have some really really like next level kinks that are unsustainable if I'm being honest like I met a girl one time and she was like can you eat me and I was like you know I can't like whatever bro I got that tongue like crazy right and then she was like no 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 like I want you to eat me with like a fork and a knife like spit roast my shit like have me over a fire eat my leg and I remember like when I read that text message I was just thinking like where where'd you get this kink and then also how many other people have you ever done this before and also if you have done this before how sustainable of a practice is this like do I have to eat you daily do I have to like, do you have a leg left at the end of the time? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Can I season it? Can I cook it? Do you have to be there? How does this work exactly, right? There's so many questions involved. Like, I remember one time I was talking to this guy, one of the weirdest conversations I've ever seen in my fucking life. But I was talking to this guy, we were chilling in his house, and he said, um, hey, David, you know that I'm growing a vagina. And then I was like, what do you mean? You're growing a vagina? He's like, yeah, I'm growing one. And I was like, what, like, on you? Like, are you growing it on your body in, like, a fucking jar? Like, are you growing it on the fucking ceiling? What do you mean you're growing it? Like, what what kind of, why would you even start a sentence like that? We weren't even talking about anything in particular. He just randomly brought that up as if it was some kind of information that I was supposed to know. Or he thought that it was, like, super, super fashionable to tell me at that particular moment in time that he was growing a vagina. But... I don't know, man. He never touched on it after that. I was like, what do you mean? Like, how what do you? How are you growing? He was like, yeah, it's something I've been doing for a little bit of time because um, he was saying that he couldn't get a girlfriend or something like that or his girlfriend lived in Japan. It was really tough for him for his girlfriend to come over. I don't fucking know, dude. This guy was fucking weird. I never talked to him after that shit because I was fucking uncalled for to tell me that you're, you know, like you're growing a vagina. Never talked to me about it either. Like after that point, it was very weird. Anyway. And so, of course, I never wanted anyone to find out who I had a crush on. Because not only is rejection inevitable when you think they're going to see you as a monster, it also feels like by just sharing your feelings, you're, like, forcing yourself on the person. Because you're a monster and monsters shouldn't have human feelings at I feel like this is a very weird way of trying to justify this shit, dude. You're not trying to tell other people because you're afraid of the judgment that you might face from that person hearing you as a fat person have feelings? What kind of logic is that? Is that something I, can I go back? Monster. It also feels like by just sharing your feelings, you're like forcing yourself on the person because you're a monster and monsters shouldn't have human feelings at all. If you're in a relationship, there's no other person other than the person that you're with that I feel like sharing your emotions with is more justified. <laughs> I don't think there's any other person, especially in relationships. Now, if you're not in a relationship, obviously, friends, family, and things like that. But in a relationship and you have an issue with some part of you, whatever, you think you have to, you, you, you want to talk to somebody about it, why wouldn't you talk to the person that you're with about that particular problem? How are you going to feel like a mon... Now, don't get me wrong. You might feel like if you're talking to this person that it might be uncalled for, it might be something really, really weird. But ultimately, if you're with somebody and then you feel like you can't talk to them about whatever that subject is, and don't get me wrong, certain people you can do certain things with, right? I know and you know that you can talk to your friends about almost anything, but you're not going to talk to them about that one time you may may or may not have thought about putting your own penis in your butthole, right? That's not something you want to talk about with your friends. With my friends, I probably could do that, but maybe not with your friends, right? Because it's a little bit uncalled for. It's a little bit weird. But the, the person that you're with doesn't have to be 100% in the sense of like you have to talk to them about everything, and that's okay. But... If you have an issue, especially related with emotions, this is the person that you talk to about it, right? You talk to this person and you tell that person, hey, I have this issue, this and this and this. If they don't come, I've heard so many people say this before where they go, women don't have empathy. And that if you tell a woman your problems or you're emotional to a woman, she'll use it against you at some other point in time. And that's like, she'll feel comforting in the knowledge that you are able to tell her that information at that point in time, but she'll resent it later on because you're showing weakness. And I I remember hearing this and I was just thinking, I, maybe the woman that you're telling your feelings to that does that is not the woman that you should be with because that is not something I would attribute traditionally with women. I would just traditionally associate that with shitty people. And if you ultimately cannot tell the person that you're with, man or woman, about your emotions or how you're going through it, then 
you shouldn't be with that person. If that person's going to use that information and shit on you later on, oh, you cried that one time when your fucking grandmother died. Yeah, we shouldn't be front. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be dating if that's the case. If you, if, if somebody's using that information against you. So I'm going to reemphasize it. I don't think that you're a monster if you're fat or anything for telling your emotions to somebody. And it is a virtue to be um, vulnerable to the person that you're with. Um, now, granted, like I said, you should probably try to find out if this person is somebody that you can do that with because not everybody's equal. So I love that you commented this because I just wrote a term paper on this concept called the monstrous feminine. It comes from Barbara Creed, who's writing about Julie Kristeva's theories of abjection. Abjection is like the thing that is marginalized society that like society wants to cast out. So it was talking about the association of the feminine with abjection in terms of like body horror and bodily functions, periods, pregnancy, etc. And fatness to me is certainly a form of abjection that we want to cast out and we characterize as monstrous and process through the horror film. I think that it's like if you're going to go and like say women are monstrous because they have menstrual cycles <laughs> and they have to go through the, the fact that their egg sac bleeds or whatever happens there. I don't know, bro. It's like a scary event. And you know, I represent it. I represent all the women out there that have menstrual cycles. I have the maxis. I think those are maxis. I don't know, dude. Look, it is what it is. I understand it. But to sit there and try to like put that next to obesity, dude. That's kind of like really, <laughs> not even close. Okay, like having a menstrual cycle is a pretty is a pretty normal is a pretty normal thing for most women, right? Obviously, and obesity is something that is so incredibly negative that it's like it affects everybody, obviously, and it is nowhere near the natural cycle of a woman in terms of blood, like the uterine lining shedding. It, to compare that to like, oh yeah, I'm so obese I can't walk up the stairs. That's what makes me a monster. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even understand what we're talking about right now, but that's it's a very far-fetched argument. In the paper that I wrote, I argued that female desire is presented as abject and monstrous and female ambition. So it's like not just sexual desire, that yes, but also female ambition. Um so I was analyzing I will say that in certain settings, women are bullied in the same oh, man, it's so difficult for me to say this, dude, because like I see it so so many times, but I see in scenarios where, for instance, women are on panels and they're talking about certain things, a lot of the time, women will back down when men are in the rooms with them. And and in the sense of like, it's very difficult, I find, for women to take their places and take their space and have those opinions and talk about those opinions when there are other people in those rooms that are maybe a little bit more disagreeable if that makes any sense and i don't see that same thing being echoed when men are in the room because i find that men even if they're talking about the same things that women's do you see that these men are able to take these spaces and they're able to present themselves in a more aggressive way whereas women get a little bit i don't know passive and it sucks a lot of times because in situations where women should be talking about certain things Oftentimes I find they're not because they just they they get more passive and that really fucking sucks. So if we're talking about in situations like that, yes, women are bullied. Women are definitely um, put in positions where I'm not saying it's men's fault. Like I can't blame dudes for, um, you know, taking the spaces like guys are just naturally a little bit more aggressive. And it'd be like the same way that I would say it's not women's fault that they're making money. I mean, obviously it is, but it's not like totally women's fault for making money off OnlyFans or selling nudes or p pictures of their feet. If I was a woman or I had the ability to make money off of my male genitalia or my feet, I would do it. The market is there. Therefore, they're going to make money from it. I don't hate on women that make money from selling vagina pictures or whatever. In the same way that I'm not going to hate on dudes for being aggressive or taking up space in these particular environments because they're voicing their opinions. You understand? I just wish that women were a little bit more aggressive because oftentimes I see on panels like very smart women, very, very intuitive, very, very articulate women that could say and do a lot of great things, but they just get bullied or they get beaten down by guys that are sitting there just like over talking them and this and that. And you know, what's really, really tragic too is on these panels. I'm not going to go into any names or whatever, but like a lot of red pill panels. Cause I like to watch red pill, a lot of red pill panels and stuff like that. Cause super entertaining to hear these guys say like the blasphemous shit that they do. Um, they will literally sit there and shit on the women. But when a guy comes into that same set, that, that same setting and a guy will say that same thing that the woman has said, They'll respect that more because it's a man. And it's like crazy to me because it's not even just on red pill panels. This is like across the board. 
it seems like oftentimes women that are saying or echoing the same thing a man would say have less value in those scenarios because they're not a man and because men are there and they're like displaying a more aggressive attitude and when a woman displays that aggressive attitude it almost kind of seems like they devalue that woman or they're looking at her as lesser which is really really tough to see dude because i love girl bosses i love women that take up space and they they're opinionated people and things like that and it just sucks to see like a lot of people i'm not saying that i'm not guilty of this but it just kind of seems like um in these scenarios where i wish women would step up and say more it almost kind of seems like they're devalued in in a lot of ways anyway in that in a film and i think that applies to fat women woo just as much if not more Have i gotta go back desire that yes but also female ambition um so i was analyzing that in a film and i think that applies to fat women Woo, just as much if not more. Having voracious sexual desire, ambition, or appetite for literal food is already taboo for women. It is 100%, especially for the sex, dude. I always thought that women never, when I was growing up and I was like a uh, teenager, dude, I thought that women didn't want to have sex. Obviously, I saw porn and shit like that, but I always kind of interpreted women in porn as like, they're getting paid for it. So naturally, even though they might want to do it, they're getting paid for it, which is fine, right? I think that I would probably do, if you're, I remember hearing this argument before where somebody said women shouldn't do porn because they're doing it against their will and th they would be doing something else if they were making more money. And I just thought, so like every job ever, so like any job, like obviously I don't want to be a person that cleans off the fucking table, but you're going to pay me to do it. So I'll do it in the same way that you're a woman and yeah, you don't want to suck this guy off, but you're going to do it because somebody's paying you money. I never understood this argument of like. <laughs> women shouldn't do porn because it's dehumanizing how about we let the women decide whether or not they want to do the porn and if they decide the money that they're getting is worth it or not worth it but i think that it's so incredibly like it took me a long time to realize that women do want to have sex and women love sex and like sometimes it comes to my attention like i always thought i always thought that i had like a really really high sex drive right i always thought like yes i want to like beat off right now i want to have to so my dick in my hand i want to have sex with whoever and whatever i can find it doesn't matter i'm a fucking savage i'm gonna have sex with you her and him i'm not him but you know what i'm talking about like i'm gonna do all this shit and i thought i had a really high sex drive but then i met this girl and it was crazy bro this girl every day it was like you need to whip this shit out right now because i need that in my mouth and i'm just like dude we're at Starbucks, right? What are you talking about? When, how, I'm not whipping that shit out right now. Let's go in the fucking, let's go in the changing room right now. Come with me. We, I need to suck you off. And it, it occurred to me at that point, or not at that point, but I've always kind of knew, obviously, that women wanted sex. But, but like that, at that point, I was like, okay, I now come to the understanding that women are as disgusting as men, if not maybe a little bit more, depending on the person, when it comes to wanting to indulge in the male, the male anatomy or the female anatomy in the sense of sex. So it's definitely socially weirder for women to be more sexual because like it's off-putting a lot of times, but I feel like when you become an adult and you realize that men and women are basically the same and uh, there's a few obvious, di obviously there are things that are different naturally. I'm not here to sit there and say there aren't differences in the fucking gender, but roughly speaking, men and women are pretty much the same. Like women may be a little bit more agreeable and men may not be m as much agreeable, but overall about the same. So when it's a fat woman having those things and she is supposed to be apologetic and smushed down by society so that everybody can feel better than her, that is like a horrifying thing to people. Because it's like she's not adhering to the role of woman by having desire or by like looking skinny and small. So being fat and having desire, it's like so audacious. It's like compounded. You could like double it up in the sense of like women are supposed to be small. Therefore, if you're a bigger woman, it's like double disincentivized. But I think in general, people are not supposed to be as fat as they are in general. Like granted, it is a little bit more, uh, it is a little bit more favorable on the woman side. But in general, it's not a good thing to be fat. Like the, the social repercussions for being fat are negative across the board, not just in the sense of like people are looking down upon you because you're fat and you can't do the same things that another person would be able to do if you were thinner. But also in this in the sense of like you're physically incapable of doing certain things because of the sizes that you are. Now, if you are 10, 15, 20 pounds over, this might not apply to you. But we're not usually talking about those people. We're usually talking about people that are like 
100, 200 pounds over, maybe even more, depending on who you're talking about. These people are most definitely going to be, even though they're not thinking about it, because most people don't, most people are passively going through life, they may not be attributing the fact that they can't tie their shoe anymore as an issue. They may not be attributing the fact that, that when they have to go into the shower, they have to physically lift up their leg to put it into the, into the tub and physically lift up the other leg and put it in the tub and take an extra 20, 30, 40 minutes in the shower, properly cleaning themselves. These things may not be occurring to these people in the head, but it's negative. It's not a good thing to not be able to take proper shits or have to buy two airplane seats to complain about these things. It's not good. It's not a good idea. And especially if we're talking about this stuff in the realm of dating, when you're dating somebody, most people don't want to deal with more problems than they already have to. Having a relationship is already going to be extraordinarily taxing on you and then the other person. That's why if you're really with a good person that knows how to communicate, it's like super, super amazing. But if that person is coming with way more problems than you would be um, traditionally like equipped for, don't feel bad that you don't want to be in a situation where you might have to be a caretaker or you might have to be that person that pick up an extra 20 or 30%. That's going to weigh on you. Too many people I've seen that have been in relationships have ended entire relationships because it's something simple as like, he didn't take out the trash. She didn't do the dishes. He didn't do the, he didn't do the laundry. He didn't do this. And you know what's crazy is that a lot of these tasks nowadays are automated. Doing the dishes, if you have a washer or whatever, like you have a washer and dryer, you, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like a lot of these things nowadays are very automated. And yet, if people don't do them, it's still going to, it's going to compile, it's going to compile and going to compile and eventually it's going to explode. You're going to hit a wall. And that could be something as simple as like, he didn't take out the trash for three weeks. Now I don't want to have sex with him. And because I don't want to have sex with him, maybe you resent this guy because you know what I'm talking about? Like it, it, it shit piles up and then eventually you go, I fucking hate this guy. And you don't know why. And then eventually you have to like leave him. And a lot of people, I see this happening too. And a lot of people would sit there and go like, are you really going to end the relationship over this? Yes, 100%. If you have ever lived in a dirty house, you've ever lived in a situation where somebody is not doing something and you're doing something all day, maybe that's like you're working and she's working and you come home and the house is fucking dirty and disgusting and that person was supposed to do something, but they didn't do it. That's just going to every fucking day that happens, dude. Yeah, it's going to fucking add up. And eventually you're going to you're gonna hit a wall and go, I'm not doing this with you anymore. It's not going to work. And it, it is what it is, dude. And that comes with the same thing when it comes to being fat. Like if you have to pick up somebody's extra 20, 30% of chores that they have to do or even lifestyle things, a lot of people just do not want to put up with that. Do not think that you are a lesser person for not picking up the responsibility of the other person when they're not willing to do it themselves. You are entitled to yourself still. Like you are your own person. One could even argue that the reason fatness is marginalized by society is because fat people are perceived to have extra desire for food and therefore no discipline and extra desire for sex. They do 100% have extra. If you're fat, that means one of two things. That means either you have a very poor understanding of nutrition and you may be eating too much in the sense of calories, right? Because like a lot of times when you look at fat people, they'll go, I'm not eating a lot. That might be true. But the foods that they are eating are so incredibly much in terms of calories that it's just adding up, right? Like we just saw that video of that girl that ate an entire pack of cookies and she was like, oh, it was nothing for me. But that entire pack of cookies was like 1,600 calories, which is ridiculous. People do that shit a lot. Like eating a bag of chips may be like nothing for me or you, but like ultimately that's like an extra 1,000, 2,000 calories that you just body slam. Or it could be that you just drank a pack of soda or like two or three, even four sodas a day. That's going to add up. If each soda is like 150 calories, dude, you just drank like 300, 400, 500, 600 calories gone out of your day. And that's going to add up. That's either you have very poor understanding of food or you just don't give a fuck about yourself. Either way, it's not something that most people want to engage with. It's just not good. Like, I don't want to be around somebody that doesn't understand that nutrition is very, very important to such a degree. Like it's, it is one of the most important things. You're literally doing it every single day. So if you're doing it every single day, you would think that you would have the most rudimentary knowledge about what you're doing to yourself instead of just piling food in your mouth and not caring about what happens afterwards. And this is why when fat people have feelings, crushes, desires for people, it feels like disgusting and horrible. And I remember feeling like it was abject, like I wanted to cast it out. Like it was like the thing that I need to separate the normative from, if that makes sense. Like I had all these techniques to get rid of crushes. 
I was super closed off sexually. I still kind of am, if I'm being honest. Okay, and so what I'm getting from this woman is that she's acknowledging that she has a little bit more in terms of responsibility for herself. Like, that's obvious. She's obviously talking. She's obese, obviously. And she's acknowledging that these things are detrimental to relationships. And because of that, she's like basically removing herself from the bracket. I don't think that's like super good idea. Like, I think that if you want to date and you want to be with somebody, go ahead. Like, go hop into the dating market, this and that. Don't just think that you're entitled, though to date somebody because you're whatever the fuck entitled that you want to bestow upon yourself. Everybody's going to be trying just because you feel like you're, you're more um, worthy to be in a relationship compared to somebody else. Doesn't mean it's true. Get over yourself, you know, work hard for it, whatever, be a good person. Now, if you are fatter, okay, I think that you should probably be working on yourself. This goes for everybody. Obviously you have a mental health issues or maybe you have like a bad habit or something like that. You should be working on that or at least acknowledge it. If you're bigger and you know these things are going to negatively affect you, can we at least acknowledge those things and try to work on making those things better, right? Make you a little bit more appetizing in the dating market at the bare minimum? Because you're literally telling me that these things are like, you're acknowledging them as problems. Why are you not working at these things? Why are you not like, you're literally telling me that they're there. And instead of like chipping away at these problems, you're just letting them stay there and fester and grow instead of like actually working on them. And that was all because desire felt monstrous. And I saw myself as a monster because of how I was portrayed in media. I think it's probably more so like these are issues and they're issues that people have to deal with, not just you. Anybody that's been, anybody that's in a relationship that says like, oh, even though that we're in a relationship, don't worry about me. I worry about yourself. Okay, that's true to a certain degree, but it ignores the literal fundamental idea of a relationship, which is that of course I'm going to be worrying about you. Of course I have some responsibility to you. Of course this is something that we're going to have to work on together. So to sit there and go, um, I have these problems and think that's not going to be something that I have to deal with, that's fucking dumb. Obviously I'm going to have to deal with these fucking problems. So, nope. I mean, not me specifically, but people who looked like me, you know what I mean? Anyway, Creed's paper on the monstrous feminine focuses specifically on horror, but I do think that fatness is a form of body horror and is portrayed that way even in comedy. Yeah, because it's literally actively killing you. It's negative to your health to such a degree that it literally de- it's, it's, it's a permanent debuff until you do something up for it. You have respiratory issues, you have knee, joint, back problems, you have literally your- you're at a higher risk of certain illnesses and diseases. Your body is in general less efficient. So it's going to take longer to heal from certain disorders and diseases. Yeah, dude. And it like also negatively affects your mental health, obviously. So I don't know what else to tell you other than maybe work on yourself and then you'll be a better, you're in a, you'll be in a better situation. So I feel like this all applies and everybody who's fat has been like enacting this in our lives. And how could we not when we are literally portrayed exclusively that way in every movie and tv show there might be some truth to it and like what do you want us to do so should we just remake all the movies or maybe like retroact retroactively retcon all those movies like come in with an edit and go even though this woman is incredibly overweight and has all these monstrous problems she's still a beautiful human being deep down inside oh she can't walk up the stairs that's okay live on the first floor yeah. Oh, she can't take a shower? Well, that's okay. Accept her for the way she is. Like, it's not... What is the What is the alternative? Can we at least talk about the alternative? Because it, it seems like you are not willing to at least accept some responsibility for those problems on yourself. Ugh. But, like, they have to be willing to kind of expose themselves or make themselves vulnerable to discrimination and judgment just for, just for being associated with you, just for being seen out in public with you. We're going to talk a little bit about dating as a fat person, especially when you're like a late in life lesbian. So for context, I came out last year at the age of 37 as pansexual, but I'm pretty sure at this point it's safe to assume that I'm just a late in life lesbian. I am also poly, so I do have a partner that I have been with for about a year. We do not live together, but I recently started dating again. <laughs> I would love to know how this relationship works. Oftentimes when I see people that are doing polyamorous relationships, I often see it doesn't work or it's like really fucking gay. The amount of times I've seen like, oh, one dude, it's so crazy watching these TikTok videos because I've seen so many times this has happened, dude. It'll be like one girl and it'll be like two guys, dude. And the guys will be like kissing each other. Dude, are you guys like gay? Like I get it. It's one girl, but the ratio here is insane. Okay. Two men one woman that's more men than it is women now granted 
I'm not saying that it couldn't work. Like, if you're a man and you want to have sexual relationship with another man and a woman, that's fine. Go ahead. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But oftentimes I'm looking at this shit and they'll go, oh, he kisses me. Oh, she kisses me. And then they'll she'll back up and the guys will like make out and she'll go, oh my God, it's so crazy. Look at this. I'm just like, this is fucking gay. This is gay as shit, dude. You guys suck each other off while she's like in the bathroom. Like what's going on here? But I see this oftentimes. Polyamory nowadays is like super popular. It's fine if you want to do it. I hope it works. But oftentimes most people can't do it. And it's like really depressing to watch these videos of people that are polyamorous. And it's so crazy to see these people are just like, perpetually unhappy unhappy i don't even know how you would delegate that like if you're one man two women who do you decide who gets what at certain time periods like you suck me off and then sheets my ass like how does this work exactly i don't know for me personally i'm very monogamous i really just enjoy one person's company i don't think i would have the time or energy to delegate my energy across two people it's already tough to do it for one which is very weird to say and it's probably like super awkward to have like a relationship with three people and then a kid I don't know, man. I just feel like people are setting themselves up for failure. But let me know down below what you think. Um, my husband and I split up back in November. I moved out in December, and we are going through the legal process of divorce and all of that. So that's a little bit about me, in case you don't know. Something that I have had to grapple with lately that I haven't really had to deal with in a very long time is the deep-seated, ingrained thought... <laughs> from society that like people aren't attracted to plus size people. I know that's not true. <laughs> it's, sure, you'll find people that, it's just like, I get it, it's true. There are people that are attracted to plus size people, but you're literally playing the lottery with that instead of just like, what you're doing is instead of having this giant open cylinder where people can come in and you can decide who and what or where you want to like do stuff with people and who you want to date with this and that, which I always think is the best thing. Like you yourself should be the person that decides who you want to date, right? You never want to date somebody that has no options. Nobody wants to date somebody that's average, right? You want to date somebody that has options. That's cool. That's like that has all this stuff going for them, right? And you yourself, most people would never consider themselves average, which is fine. But most people are average, which is fine too, right? The point I'm making is you should be the person that decides who you want to date. If you're fat, I'm not saying you don't have that option because like social media obviously gives you some form of like more options, right? You're more open to, to, to more people that are like willing to date you and this and that. But often I find is that these people will have a few different people that are like super attracted to them. Like people that are fetish, that are into fetishes, people that have very low standards, people that are maybe like they have nothing else going for them. So like this is the only thing they have. So you see that. And I'm not saying that happens all the time. You might find a very genuine person that is very attracted to fat people, or maybe they're just like pansexual like this person is, for instance, like that doesn't give a fuck what you look like. And they're really only attracted to personality. I don't know what the fuck is good with those people personally. I like vagina. I like looking at vagina, not all the time, boobs and things like that. That's cool for me. But I obviously treasure the mind more than I do the physical appearance. But I feel like physical shape is super, super important, especially for most people. And if you don't think that's like really important, that's fine. But you're like ignoring most people when they say, yeah, I want to date somebody that's attractive to me. You understand that? Like, and sure, you can find somebody that is going to be attracted to you for being fat. I just think that what you're basically doing is you're, you, you, you would have all these options that would be like hundred percent people that would be attracted to you or most people that would be attracted to you because you're thinner and you're traditionally attractive, which most people are not in the sense of like, you don't have all the traits that are gonna make you really attractive, but at least being thin and healthy, that's going to literally open you up to so many more people. If you're fat, you're literally taking like a hundred percent of people hypothetically that will be attracted to you and you're narrowing it down to like 5%. And that 5% is going to come with a lot of problems because the people that are traditionally attracted to fat people are going to be probably bottom of the barrel, um, in terms of the dating market. Right? So, and keep in mind, I'm saying dating, not sex. I'm sure there are plenty of people that are willing to have sex with you and they don't care that you're fat, which is like, I don't know why I have to say this so many times. It shouldn't really matter if I'm being honest when it comes to people that, oh, he wants to have sex with me, I must be hot. That's not how it happens, dude. Guys are willing to have sex with watermelons, bouquets of flowers, dude, peanut butter jars that have been microwaved. It's not, it's really not a flex for a guy to have sex with you. And I'm sure it's the same way with women. I've literally talked to hundreds of lesbians that have told me that the lesbian market, even though they're a little bit more superficial, they'll have sex with you too. So I don't think it's that much of a flex. 
to just have sex with people. The real commitment, the, the real thing that you should be worrying about is the relationship. And I know that this person is talking about relationships because they're saying dating as opposed to having sex with somebody, which I don't think that they're, they're both the same thing. Like, I know objectively that's not true. Um, but the part that I think is tricky It's for me objectively not true. Okay, go back. I got to go back real quick. It's not. It's objectively not true in the sense of like, yes, 100% people will be attracted to fat people. But the amount of people that, that are going to be attracted to you as a fat people is going to be severely diminished. So objectively, that's not true. Um, but the part that I think is tricky for me is that my partner, she is similar in size to me. Like we can share clothes. My ex-husband um, was a big guy, so like he was either close to my size or always larger than That's me. That's tough. So I have not dated anyone who was a good deal smaller than me since I was in my early 20s. Cool. And a conversation that I had to have with the person that I've gone out with a few times is like, have you dated a plus size person before? And it's not even solely for the fact of like verifying that she would find me attractive. It was also part of knowing for myself, like how much education am I going to need to do for this person? Because there is a learning curve. It I think that it's my, it might be a little bit more valid to ask this question than it is for like, cause the, you know, I, I'm a snow bunny, right? I'm a fucking snow bunny. I'm not ashamed to admit that I've only ever dated black women. And I like, I'm going to always stress this. Okay. I'm not like purposefully dating black women because I'm a fucking purposeful snow bunny. I throw out my rod. I reel it in black ladies. I don't know what else to say than that. Okay. I would perfectly be okay dating Asian women, uh, middle Eastern women at whatever, ethnically ambiguous or even white girls, whatever. No problem for me, but it just kind of seems like whenever I reel them in, it's just black ladies. Anyway, I know that I've been on dates with black girls before. And the question I always get asked is, so have you ever dated black girls before? And I always approach that question with, um, yeah, sure. And then they'll go, so you know what you're dealing with. Uh, no, I don't know what I'm dealing with. What does it have to do with anything? What are you trying to infer right now? What kind of racism is this against your own people? First of all, no, just because you're a black lady doesn't mean there's some kind of like intrinsic idea of how you're supposed to act because you're a black lady. That doesn't make any sense. No, I think that you're probably a unique individual and that maybe there's some kind of things that are attributed to you being black. Like I'm sure you wear cocoa butter and shit like that. Sure. And you take care of your hair, you wear bonnets and things like that. But there's nothing about that that would make me go, this is a black lady, therefore she's going to act in this particular type of way. That's kind of, you know, crazy or whatever. If you're asking if you've ever dated a fat person, there might be more to it than that because, hey, have you ever dated a fat woman before? Your fridge is going to be busted down. Like, I'm going to be destroying your floor because my feet weigh eight times more than a normal person's feet. You're going to have to literally lift me out of the tub when I fall down because I can't lift myself out of there, especially when I'm slippery. There might be some more validity to that. But then again, I don't know how... Is this something you ask on the first date? Because I know for a fact, if somebody asked me a, a question like that on the first date, I'm going to be immediately turned off from that. Because like, what are you trying to say right now? Are you saying that like, I don't have expertise? Are you trying to infer that uh, you're more luggage than I, I that, that, than, than like another person would be? I just think that a lot of times when you're asking questions like that, you're setting yourself up for failure or you're devaluing yourself. Bring, show me as opposed to tell me, right? I don't want to know, like, I don't want you to tell me that you drive a $100,000 car. I want you to pick me up in the $100,000 car. And then I can go, wow, oh my God, this, whoa, this is a nice car. What? Oh my, and you drink water? What, abs? You have abs? It's so much worse when a person tells you, I have abs. I drive a $100,000 car. I make $200 million a year or something like that. It's always worse than just finding it out organically because it takes away the mystery. I want to learn stuff about you as opposed to just reading your Wikipedia page and finding out all the good stuff from that. No, I want to know. Like, show me as opposed to tell. And the same thing here. Like, why are you asking me, have you ever dated a fat girl before? What is that? Why are you asking me that? If you have never been with or known that many plus size people that are, you know, emotional labor kind of things that we have to think about that thinner people just like don't have to think. Okay. About. So she's not even coming it from it, from the sense of like, I'm physically fatter than you. Therefore there are going to be problems navigating the world and even household chores. I, <laughs> I gave her the benefit of the doubt thinking that she was going on that. No, she's talking about like trauma because <laughs> she's fat. Like, again, this is not, that's not good. 
So you're literally setting me up for failure at that point. You're giving me the out as soon as I talk to you. Like if I'm talking to you and you go, have you ever dated fat girls? Because there's a lot of stuff that goes on with us because, you know, we're fat and we have to deal with all these social stigmas. And, you know, there's a lot of like bad things that happen to us because we're fat. I'm going, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm never talking to this person ever again. This person is fucked. Like, I'm, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, man? Why, why would you ever talk to somebody like this ever? Stop devaluing yourself. Nobody wants to date somebody with a mental illness, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. If you have a mental illness, I don't think you're a bad person. But if you're going into a situation and you're going, so I'm really fucked up. I have all these problems. I have daddy issues. I have a really bad eating disorder. Um, yeah, like I'm just looking at that like, what the fuck is this? Like You're just like literally naming off one after another problem, 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 problem. I don't need that, dude. What? <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. It's good to... Make sure that person understands where you're coming from with certain things. But if you're sitting there on the first date going, I'm terrible, I'm disgusting, I don't wash myself. <laughs> it's just like I'm normal people are not going to look at that and go, this is it. This is the one. I need this person in my life. Oh, yeah. Kind of things that we have to think about that thinner people just like don't have to think about. And at first I was like, do I really want to bring this up? No. <laughs> do I really want to talk about this? Because most of the problems that you're talking about are just like... There are issues that you're only focusing on, and most of those issues are not even real issues. And most people, the normal person that's in the middle, they're not going to look at those as issues either. And they're going to see these things as like, what the fuck is this person talking about? Um, but it ended up being a really good conversation because she told me that she had dated someone who was plus size before. She told me there were some things that like she had already learned through that process of like things. That I love that it's like, oh, have you ever dated a plus size person instead of going... I know I'm fat right now, but I'm actively losing the weight. Even though these things are all literal problems and I'm telling you that they're problems, I'm not solving them. I'm just telling you that these are things that you're going to have to deal with if you want to date me instead of me losing weight, which is obviously something I can do, but I'm not going to because I'm a fat girl. Therefore, can't change it. Fat acceptance. Hashtag beauty in the eye of the beholder. Hashtag I'm not changing for nobody. That she needed to consider that she had never thought about before. So I think if this is something that you are kind of struggling with too, have the conversation. It's really helpful. Sure. I will say this too. I have not run into a lot of situations on like dating apps or in real life in queer spaces that felt fat phobic to me. And I know that I've seen a lot of videos that talk about the like rampant fat phobia in the queer community, but thankfully, <laughs> fingers crossed, um, I really haven't run into that that much. I think she hasn't dated it enough, dude. If she's been married for a long time, she's been out of the dating market or whatever for a long period of time. I think it's going to be like a very sore awakening when she real, like if you're dating one person, you're putting all those eggs in that basket. Odds are, it's just not going to work. Cause most people are not compatible with each other. Obviously, like it takes a long time to find somebody to go through the proper steps to like, see if this person's cool. And then eventually get to the, the the back end where you start dating. Most people, it you get eliminated in that first like one, two, three weeks, right? And then eventually after like you might find somebody after a month, two months, depending on how, you know, what kind of person you are. So if you're only talking to one person and you're going, it worked out for me. It happened. It was perfect. I'm sure it was great there. But like what, are this, what is the practicality of this person staying around post one week, two weeks, right? If anything, I have had kind of the opposite experience. With one person. She's talking about one person here. Where people in the queer community are more open-minded about, like, not adhering to specific, like, typical beauty standards. I think she's going to be very, very, like, this is going to be super disconcerting for her when she actually starts dating more people, dude. Get out there. Talk to more people and see what they say. I have been fat my whole life. I don't Red think flag. I have a single memory where I haven't existed in a body similar to this one. Maybe on a smaller scale, but for the most part, I have always been chubbier. Dude, she's got the pillow. You see the pillow, dude? This is what fat, this is what, they always say that they have to do this when they feel insecure. So, yeah, preaching the insecurity right here. To this one, maybe on a smaller scale, but for the most part, I have always been chubbier. But one thing I have noticed in making friends with other fat people is a commonality that we all share. You know, growing up, I often thought that I would have experiences of people just kind of overlooking me because of my size. And now it's the complete opposite. So many of my friends experience people who uh, fetishize us in secret. And unfortunately, a lot of the experiences that I've had and other friends have had is people who only see us as a body. 
And even though for a very, very long time in my life, I in today's world and like social media, dude, I know that a lot of people will say this, that like a lot of guys imagine women as objects. And I, it took me a, a little bit of time to realize that women are not objects and they're real people and things like that. I'm a victim of this too, obviously. But I think a lot of that has to do with social media. I feel like for a long time, social media wasn't a thing. And you know what's funny too is that social media for a long period of time or like a good amount of time at the very beginning was an augmentation to your life. Like it was an enhancement to your life. You know what I'm talking about? You had friends on like Facebook or something and that you made plans with them to meet up in real life or like you made plans to do something with them. Maybe you communicated on the side. Um, I, I use Facebook to enhance my relationships. Nowadays, it's I use Facebook to make friends. I use Facebook to have people around me that I can talk to, right? And because of that, we lose a lot of the human communication aspects of it. And you just kind of meet people nowadays that have absolutely no idea how to communicate one-on-one -on -one with people. Like it's so insane to me, the amount of times I've talked to people and they have no communication skills at all when it comes to one-on-one -on -one communication with somebody. And that is a very, very fundamental skill if you're doing anything. Like granted, a lot of the jobs and professions nowadays, especially here in the westernized countries, might be something that you could do at your house, might be something that you could do in a place where you're more isolated from human communication, right? But I would stress so heavily that if you're in a situation like that, because I know people that are making a good amount of money working from home, they never need to go outside. They're spending literally 24 seven inside their houses, right? They're getting food delivered to them. They're buying shit on Amazon. They never go outside. They're spending 24 hours a day, like nine hours working. And then the rest of their day, they're on discord playing video games with their fucking friends. And then they go to sleep, they eat the fucking food and they wake up and they do that shit constantly ever like over and over and over again. I do not know what kind of problems that's gonna lead to in the next 10, 20 years, because we don't know what that shit's gonna lead to, right? In the same way that like, I know, I've been watching porn since I was a fucking 12. I don't advocate for that, right? I don't think it's a good thing. I don't know what the complications of that are gonna be. I think I'm a pretty level-headed person for the most part, but I know that there are people out there that probably have no idea what the fuck that's doing to them, right? I've met a lot of women that think it's like super appropriate to just get mouth fucked. Like that's just normal. You know what I'm talking about? Like you need to literally gag me, throw me on the floor, beat me up, domestic violence shit. And I always think like, this is not normal, right? I'm not saying that you're bad for wanting these things, but the amount of women that I've talked to that have very, very weird out of the ordinary sexual preferences and things like that, it's, it's obviously because of porn. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I know that's something that's abnormal and something that we're recently seeing. Like if you go back one or two generations, this is not something that you would see. And we're seeing tons of new changes because of social media landscapes and how things, how people interact with each other nowadays and other other stuff. So I don't know what it's gonna be like in the next 10, 20 years. It could be like crazy, bro. People just don't go outside anymore. Nobody's how to talk to each other. People are becoming very antisocial. It is tough nowadays when I see people having these problems and most of these problems are because they're setting themselves up for failure. They're not putting themselves in places where they can interact with other people and talk to other people and things like that. So when guys are sitting there and they're objectifying women, I get it because they've never had communications with women. They have absolutely no idea what women are like in real life. They have absolutely no idea that women are more than their bodies. They just have this imagination because they've been watching porn for their entire fucking life and they think women are just fuck, fuck dolls. And it's terrible. And it's, it's, an, it's just like most, a lot of people don't want to look at it from the other side. And some people are incapable of looking at it from the other side. And I'm not saying I am most definitely looking at it in the sense of like, it's not a good thing, but it's also something that is like, it's not their fault. A lot of times, right? It's not their fault. Like these people are literally growing up on the internet and they have no interactions, dude. So it's tough. Um, it's real tough. And I'm not saying like, I'm a master at talking to women, but I've talked to a lot of girls in physical life. Right. And I'm so thankful that I grew up in a time period where I didn't have the internet. And then I did have the internet because I got like the best of both worlds, like Hannah Montana. And I can understand a lot of like, yes, it's like super ridiculously important. Like I'm a very outgoing person. I love talking to people. I feed off other people's energies out in public and things like that. I love talking. I love communicating all this other stuff, but I also really like talking to people online. And I can separate those two things, but I'm like, okay in both realms. Whereas a lot of people nowadays have never had that physical communication in real life. And they've only had that communication in the digital realm. And you can see it when you talk to these people. As a body and even other friends have had is people who only see us as a body. 
And even though for a very, very long time in my life, I wanted to be acknowledged and I wanted to be appreciated and I wanted someone to find me attractive, I couldn't ever be prepared for the level of damage this would do on my self-worth. It's like when you don't know how good you got it until it's gone and then when or when you get it like you think that this is like it's like the Midas thing right you think that it's such it's a great idea to think that you're gonna anything you touch turns to gold then you touch your dick and then it turns to gold and you're like wait a minute hold up now right there's gonna be a lot of complications there like you want what you don't have and then you get it and then you don't want it anymore you know what I'm talking about dude it's like when you meet, I know when I was like 14 years old, I was like, I want a girl that would like fucking suck me off, whatever. I want a, I want a girlfriend that like loves sex, a, a fucking nymphomaniac. Then you get it and you're like, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Maybe this wasn't what I thought. Maybe this isn't what I wanted, right? I think that a lot of times, it's, it's, it, a lot of people think like that, dude. And she's starting, she's seeing the, the repercussions of that, dude. She wanted to be valued based off her body. And now that she's getting it, she doesn't like it. <laughs> on one hand, I wanted to be a desired person. On the other, I wanted to be seen as something so much more than that. It might be a little difficult to get the best of both worlds, you know? Like, a lot of people nowadays are totally okay with just having sex with you, and that's that. It's a very large commitment to have somebody that wants both of those things and values you. That is tough, dude. That's why I see so many people failing in relationships nowadays because they have no idea what it takes to be in a relationship, and people just kind of go into relationships with the wrong person, not knowing because, like, you don't know – it takes a long time to date and then understand this is what I need, okay? Like this is what I want. This is what I need from you. Sometimes if you haven't dated and maybe you don't have those experiences and you can't learn from other people, you don't know what you want and then you get into a relationship with somebody and this person is fucked. But because you're in this relationship with this person, you never had this experiences, you don't know how to diagnose that. This person's treating you like shit. This person's acting like an asshole constantly, They're cheating on, doing all these terrible things. But because you've never had the opposite experience of somebody that actually cares about you or somebody that like really, really wants the best for you, you don't know that that's a bad thing. And you might just be passively going through that relationship, getting fucked every single day in your soul, not realizing this is something as bad because you think it's the norm when it's not the norm. You understand? So I really, really understand it from this point of view, dude. It's so tough nowadays. For people to like if you haven't dated dude i i see this so many times with guys they have no idea what they're doing in, in relationships dude and even obviously to girls but girls have a little bit more leeway because i feel like it's easier for dating for women because women are naturally going to be wanted just in general whereas so many guys that are like average get denied for being like indian or having too much armpit hair or just like things that like i don't know it's just weird shit, right but so many guys i talk to have no idea what it's like to be in a relationship. I've literally talked to guys that are like, oh, she has to do this for me. She has to do that. She has to do this. I'm just thinking like, bro, why aren't you just dating your mom at that point? What the fuck are you talking about? Like you need this woman to sit there at home all day, make you fucking food, do this, do that. Like this woman's going to have a job, obviously. Do you not like think about that? You make $30,000 a year. What the fuck are you talking about? Obviously she's going to have to fucking chip in. But then some guys think that they don't even have to communicate with their woman. A lot of guys will sit there and think that they can just literally contribute no emotional value to their woman and think that that's going to do anything besides hurt the relationship like you're just sitting there as a fucking brick never talking about your emotions never talking about like what's going on in your day it's not good it's it's like emotional you're just emotionally irrelevant and i know a lot of people will go emotion is negative for men are you fucking stupid dude like it's okay okay like you know this and i know this right if you've had a dad in your life or something like that right i wasn't privileged enough to have a dad but if you, your mom cries a lot, right? Let's say, for instance, hypothetically, you know your mom cries a lot. She's an emotional woman. Women are usually a little bit more emotional. But when dad cried, it was serious, right? When dad when dad broke down, he cried, he showed his emotions. It was serious. Was he weak for that? No, he wasn't weak for that. It just happened less likely. That's got to be you. It's okay to cry. It's okay to process emotions. It's okay to go through shit. You don't have to do it all the fucking time and sit there and like cry on your girl's fucking shoulder. Yeah, anybody's going to not like that. But if you do it, to a degree where it's like appropriate when you're actually dealing with stuff and you need to talk to somebody about that dude yeah it's super attractive for women to look at that stuff and go like this is you know like i women want to be with somebody that's emotionally mature to the degree that they're able to process their emotions and if they need to have you there also that can help them work through that there's nothing wrong with that it's completely it's a completely valid experience you're not a fucking robot you can deal with that shit I wanted to find this middle ground that apparently I wasn't allowed because I existed this way. And despite going on crash diets, abusing my time at the gym, sometimes just choosing not to eat, no matter what I did, I 
couldn't stop existing in the body that I have. I don't know what you mean by like, if you were going to the gym and you were dieting appropriately, I literally just heard nothing but red flags from you. You literally just said all the bad things. I went to the gym religiously, like you were abusing the gym, meaning like you were probably going way more than you possibly should. You were crash dieting again, not good. You were not eating anything for days, not good. All I'm hearing is like, you're just telling me all the bad things about diet and exercise and you didn't do anything that was correct. That's what I'm hearing from you. So if you're sitting here telling me I couldn't make changes because you did everything wrong. Yeah, that makes fucking sense to me. That's like somebody saying like, I, that's like somebody saying like, oh, I took the driver's test and I ran over nine people. I can't believe I didn't pass. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Obviously, you're not going to lose weight if you're doing terrible things that are going to make you rebound to such a degree like the rubber band snaps back. Like, yeah, obviously, dude, you're swinging too hard on the pendulum. So it meant at times just accepting this way of dating and this way of being it's, it's such a bad thing dude because this person literally just went through telling me all the terrible things they just did and then just came to the realization that they can't do anything about it because they you did it all wrong obvious fucking lee is not gonna work for you and then you came to the conclusion that it was just like oh i guess i can't do it i guess i can't lose weight because even though i tried everything that was literally all wrong i still can't lose weight so i guess i just have to put up with the fact that i'm fat okay whatever dude that's up to you bro I mean, whatever, man. These people are never going to change because, like, they're, like, really listen to what she just said, okay? She's having all these problems. She just told you all the problems that she did, all the things that she did to try to alleviate the problems, which were all wrong. I'm not even saying, I'm not even making that up. She just said that. And then she came to the conclusion that they, that was just nothing. It was just all for nothing. Like, she can't do anything to change herself. Instead of having somebody in her life or, like, somebody online even, like, if I was here, I could tell her this, right? She has no one. Everybody's like echoing the same shit. Yes. They're all yes queening this girl and she's getting no pushback. And when she does get pushback, she just blocks them or she doesn't reply to the comments or she doesn't look at it as like actual information because she's never had that type of information be actually critically evaluated in her life. She just looks at it all as like, I don't know, harassment or like fat phobia. When in reality, it's not fat phobia to say crash dieting is not a good thing. Going to the gym for nine hours is not a good thing. That felt like it was all I was allowed because this is the way I looked. Terrible, so, man. So, so many of us. Don't a lot of these problems, I'm not going to say that, like, obviously dating shit guys is not good, right? I mean, obviously you're responsible for that to some sort of degree. But I'm not going to sit here and blame you for a guy that acted one way and you got into a relationship and then he acted a completely different way. I can't blame you for that. But one thing I can definitely blame you for is... You should be doing your own research in the sense of like, how do I alleviate my own problems? How do I get better as a person? How do I do this? How do I get better matches? How do I discern who is and who is not a better match for me? You know, these are all deliberate things that you have to do if you actually are serious about dating. I know a lot of people just don't do that and they just date people. And that could be good too. If you're just like a very chill person, maybe you can dissect things, but it's going to be very hard when you find that one person that you're with and they just want to smell your vagina and that's it know what it feels like to just be loved because we are lovable people so we either go to these places of feeling like all we can offer is this fetish experience or hoping that one day we'll lose the weight and be looked at as a normal human being it's terrible and i'm sick of it i don't think any of us deserve that it's just i i can't the only thing i can say to you is that if you're having these problems, okay, and you're only thinking that you're valued for your fetishes and you're never meeting guys that are ever going to take you for your actual value in the sense of like what you can bring to the table as more than just your body, all I can say to you is in that front is like you are responsible for yourself solely, okay? Now, granted, obviously somebody does something to you or whatever the fuck, I'm not blaming you for those things, but you have to at least acknowledge and take accountability for the things that you can change. You can change your weight. That's a fact. You can 100% evaluate these guys differently. Discern to these guys what you want and what you don't want. Don't just give up vagina. Don't just have sex with people. If this is what you're looking for, at least. If you want to have sex with people, go ahead. But if you want a relationship and you want to be valued for more than just your vagina, you need to make this shit apparent, okay? You can't just give sex away and think, I'm going to get a relationship after. You might have that happen to you, but the chances of that happening are very, very diminished compared to making the guy wait, having this person like really work for you, showing you instead of telling you, you know, giving it out early is not going to be beneficial for a lot of people, right? If you know that the weight is negatively affecting you, why don't you lose it? Why do you not lose it? I understand that you came to the conclusion that you couldn't or like it was impossible for you to lose weight because you went on this very, very crash, terrible, disgusting diet, whatever you went on, but you can, you can lose weight. You could become more attractive. And I know it sucks to say that you're fat. You may not be as attractive as you possibly can be, but it's true. It is what it is. Okay. People are not traditionally attracted to overweight or obese people. They don't know what to say to that. That's just what it is. Most people don't like sucking on rocks. 
but some people do suck on rocks, right? I'd much rather suck on an egg. You know what I'm talking about? I'd much rather suck on like actual nutritionist food, the same way that most people are attracted to healthy, normal sized people. Not many people are going to be attracted to fat people. So if you know that this is something you can change, do it. And it's going to be good for you. I'm lucky now that I have found someone who sees me as a complete person and that this is not my first experience. It's also a gamble. Like if you're sitting there and going, maybe one day will somebody will value me for who I am and not just my body. Like, sure, you can have that imagination in your head, but you're literally playing the lottery and thinking that somebody somewhere out there is going to value you for that thing. Why not just increase the bucket? Like increase the funnel as much as you can. And when the people are at the very bottom of the funnel, you can pick through those people and go, nope, this guy is cringy. Nope, this guy is obviously terrible, dude. I don't like him. He doesn't brush his teeth. Nope, don't like this guy. This guy is terrible. He's disgusting. He doesn't wear deodorant. Like these, you can do that instead of having like this fucking very small funnel and like four guys come through and every single one of those guys doesn't wear deodorant and they all want to smell your vagina. And one of the guys only really likes fat women. That's what you're doing to yourself right now. Open it up, open it up, get more people in there. I remember when I was knee deep in this very, very toxic fetish community. That's how crazy. easy it was for me to get completely lost in this world that just did so much damage to me and my self perception. If you are going through that now, you are not alone. Please know that you deserve so much more than that. I agree. Also you deserve to not be fetishized for your body. Absolutely. Unless that's what you want. If you want to be fetishized for your body, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. Like, it's okay sometimes to have a guy that wants to suck on your nipples because he loves nipples. Like that's okay, right? If that's what he wants, right? As long as he's like, he's allocating those resources mentally to other places as well. Like he's valuing you for your nipples and he's valuing you for your mental capacity. Like, as, I don't know why I hear so many guys nowadays go like, oh yeah, I just want a girl that, uh, like, oh, the best thing a woman can do is not talk. Uh, to a certain degree, to a certain degree. Like, you know, you've all, have, it's not just for women though. Like to a certain degree, like you don't want to hear this other person say some shit. Like when you know they're wrong, they're just fucking sitting there talking for hours and hours about how shit of a person you are. That's terrible, obviously. But, um, you should want somebody that's fucking smart. You should want somebody that's going to like, at least engage you in a significant way, mentally speaking. Like, why do you want a person that's just going to sit there, do everything that you're going to tell them to do. And then that's it. Like that's fucking boring. What do you like? What? Do you, why are you in a relationship with that person? If that's like, if that's all you're doing. It's such a terrible, terrible ideology we live in nowadays, where it's like, I just want women that do nothing. So no, there is support, and there are people out there who have been through that, and will be there for you if you want to get out. You deserve to be loved as a complete person. That is true, but it's, it, it requires deliberate work. You need to actually do something in order to get that person. It's not going to be, you can't just expect people to just exist and see the value that you present when you're fat. That's obviously not going to happen. It's not, not, that's not what's going to happen. What you want is like, you want to put on a display. You want to peacock a little bit. You want to show off. Hey, look, I have this to offer you. And I have all this other stuff behind it that may not be as obvious to be seen, right? Because like, if you're looking at a fat person, even though you may have the stuff behind the scenes, which is like you're smart, you're intelligent, you're funny, you're charismatic, you have all these great character traits, that's cool. Not many people are going to go past that first, she's fat. You understand? Like, not many people want to see that. So, you need to do something to make your the, the package you're presenting more appetizing in order to acquire the people that you want to get. And you might say, that's superficial. They shouldn't be judging me solely based off my physical appearance. That's fine that you say that, but it's not going to work other, in any other way. Physical appearance is very, very important, especially when it comes to dating. Most people want somebody that looks good, at least looks good for them. So if you don't have those things and those things are like negated for you, you're negating literally almost every, like a large portion of, of society that does, like most people want to date somebody that's attracted to them. So what you're doing is literally just negating entire brackets of people. And I know it sucks to say, that people are superficial, but it's the reality of the situation. There's no other way to say it than that. Like maybe one day when we're all like meta and like we're in virtual reality and you could change the shape of your body at whim and then you can make yourself more attractive, maybe there. But in today's world, it is what it is. You're going to have to do something to incre increase your physical shape or increase your physical appearance in order to attract more people. It is what it is. Ferraris are more attractive than Priuses. I don't know what to say than that. It is what it is. Okay. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously helps me grow on the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I'd appreciate you tremendously. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can, if you don't want to, that's fine too. You don't have to. I love you regardless of what you do. You being here alone is already significant and I love it. Don't think I'd sleep. Don't, don't think that me not acknowledging you being here 
this is a privilege, 100% a privilege. Thank you for being here. I could not do these particular types of things without you being here. I love you so incredibly affectionately, dude. For you, for the person that you are, the individual, not the group, not the per not the people in the groups that you represent. For you, I love you for you. And all the terrible character traits you have that you think are not good and all those things that you think that are like they're hurting you or whatever. I think that even though you think you're an incomplete person, I love you for who you are. I think you're getting better every single day. Don't shun yourself. You're doing well. You're doing amazing. I'm glad that you're working on yourself. Even if it's not something that you're doing like you're actively working on. I know you're working on something about yourself to make yourself a better person, to make yourself a more presentable person, to help other people around you. It's super, super amazingly important. Your elbows are looking really, really uncrunched today. I have to tell you that because usually I see a lot of people and they really slack off on the moisturization part on their elbows, but you have these like very, very delectable eye, uh, elbows and eyebrows, obviously, but your elbows are super, super nice, really nice defined eye, um, elbows. And I love them. I love them uh, 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 super ridiculously. I think if I told you the amount of times, I think if I told you to the extent at which I love your elbows, you would probably think it's a little unhealthy. It is a little bit unhealthy, but I dream about them sometimes, not all the time. Anyway, if you want to, sorry, if you watch the video in its entirety and you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. It's a good color, isn't it? I like yellow. It's not like my favorite color. I think probably my favorite color is green. I don't know. Thinking about it, I have changed my my favorite color. It used to be red. I still do like red, but I think green is cool now too. I like green and blue, like a light blue, like a cyan almost, because it's like a cool bluish greenish color. Let me know what your color, favorite color is down below too. I'm interested in your favorite color. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter. And my Discord. If you want to follow me on any of those platforms, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace!